So lovely to meet you, Mark. Maybe you can start by telling us about your documentary, Walk With Me. What's it about? What can people expect to see who haven't seen the film before? Uh, Walk With Me is a film about a group of Zen Buddhist monks and nuns who live in a monastery in France. And they follow the teachings of a world-famous Zen Buddhist master called Thich Nhat Hanh. And this place is kind of one of the leading mindfulness training centers in the world. And it's not just exclusively for monks and nuns, but for anyone. Anyone, the monastery is always open for people to go there um, in order to find a way to cultivate more of a sense of inner calmness and peace in themselves in the busyness of the lives that they lead. And what inspired you to make this film? What, what Originally I was invited to make the film through the, my co-director Max Pugh because his brother is a monk in this monastery. So they decided to open it up to cameras for the first time and reached out to Max to say whether he would be interested and he called me up and he said would you be interested and I felt that I needed a bit of mindfulness in my life back then and I wouldn't do any harm hanging out with a, a Zen master for a few years not that I thought it'd be a few years I thought it'd actually be a year and a half but it ended up being four years oh my goodness and what was that experience like for you personally and how did you go about making that into a film it was uh, on a personal level it was quite transformative and on a, on a, from a filmmaking level, it was very, very challenging because one of the main conditions that Thich Nhat Hanh had was don't make it exclusively about me. In fact, don't make me the subject of your story, even though it's about him. Make it about the, the community, the monks and nuns, namely because he feels he's a very humble monk, shies away from publicity, but he kind of believes that we live in a society where we, as a community, put too much faith and power into the hands of leaders who abuse that power and we should reclaim that power back and as a communities make decisions that can be the change that we want to see in the world. So that was his condition. There's over 400 monastics in this monastery who all wear the same brown robes and have the same hairstyle of shaved heads. So the challenge was trying to spend time getting to know people, identify the characteristics of everyone and work out how to tell a story where you're making a community the character of a movie. And in the end, we settled on trying to create a film, an experiential movie, which is more like an invitation for a meditation. So we're asking the audience to feel like what it is to experience being in their company. And through doing that, hopefully, that transmits this kind of calm and peaceful energy that we experience by being in there. Been so far, and how do you see it fitting in here with the London Film Festival? Um, I think not just how it sits in the London Film Festival, but how it sits in society right now, or in the landscape of entertainment, is I think it becomes like an oasis of calm. If you think about the wider context of it, is that very much we're not just in in the kind of films we consume, but in the news we consume, it's all about uh, conflict. It's about tension, conflict, abuse of power. We're flooded daily, hourly, through our news feeds, our social media news feeds, about this, this really negative energy. And there are few opportunities where we can tell stories that give people an opportunity to find a different way of looking at things, a different way of looking at themselves. And I think ultimately, that's what this film does here in the film festival. It gives people a chance just to have, breathe, and remember that we can breathe. And that in itself is a calming experience that makes, that makes us find a way to be more centered in the storm of life, which is essentially what the experience of this did for me, is find a way that we all have storms in our lives, but how can we stay in the center of it as opposed to being completely lost and caught up in it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, have you got any other projects in the pipeline? Is this a stepping stone to the next thing? Yeah, I've got a handful of projects that are going on at the moment. Um, so I'm just currently making a, a film about um, somebody who is at the end of their life and it's their last 12 months and it's an exploration about what would you do if you only had 12 months to live? How would you live your life differently? What decisions and choices would you make? And how do you see the broader landscape in terms of film and culture? Do you feel like there is more and more space for different types of storytelling, different perspectives? Or do you think that it's something that's still difficult to crack into if you want to do something a bit different? If you want to do something, if you're a filmmaker or a storyteller and you want to do something different, you have to accept 
that it's going to be a much harder ride than if you do the more conventional easy route. The conventional easy route will give you a bit more easier access to financing your movie and anything that's trying to challenge uh, a convention or trying to do it a different way is always going to be tough. So, um, and you have to be highly committed and passionate in order to see it through. So I think there are, yeah, there's always films that are doing that. There's always stories that are doing that. And I think with the advent of social media, it's easier to build up more of a, a buzz or a, a following around that kind of intention than there used to be in the past. And you have Benedict Cumberbatch doing some of the voice yeah. is that right? Yeah. How did he get involved with the film? Um, well, we had heard that Benedict was already f a, a, got into meditation himself. And also we had heard that he had been inspired by a couple of books of Thich Nhat Hanh that's really helped him in his life. So we were always looking to find cast an actor who could deliver a kind of voiceover that really was coming also from a lived experience. They could really relate to the material. So when we heard that Benedict had that connection already, we just approached him on it and he was really up for doing it. So you hope people are going to take some good messages away from this film? Yeah. Thanks so much for your time. Best of luck with your future yeah. projects.